What's going on guys? Welcome back to Motor Mouse Garage. And today I've got a little something different for you guys. This is a little different. So while we're waiting on parts for the 80 series stuff that I have back here and right here, uh, I've, I've been neglecting my other vehicle a little bit, which is my, my 4Runner. So I have a, a 93 4Runner, which I can come show you guys over here. So this is my 93 4Runner. This is, you know, nothing too crazy. This is kind of like my, my budget build and kind of what started it all and was the reason why I wanted to film everything I did with the 80 series because this thing is 4.4 or sorry 3.4 liter swapped so it's got a an engine from a 97 forerunner into this 93 so I got rid of the three point slow but it's still an automatic transmission for the time being which will probably change in the future as well but Basically, I took this thing on a trip to Florida to visit a couple friends of mine in Ocala, and uh, I didn't really drive it very much before since I had picked up the 80 series, uh, and I kind of been slacking on the maintenance on that. I know, forgive me, forgive me for I've sinned, but um, what we're gonna do today is I'm gonna replace the upper control arm bushings the bushings themselves with OEM Toyota bushings, and then we're going to replace the idler arm for the steering um, because I put like a really cheap one on there from AutoZone. It was like 50 bucks before I left for my trip to Ocala because the original Japan Triple Five I had on there was um, not good. So uh, I beat it up a little bit when I took it to Colorado, so it, it needed to be replaced. So that's what we're gonna do today. Um, I'll kind of explain as I go, but I'm not gonna get too in depth with this one. This is just a quick hit in between doing stuff for the A series. Um, you know, no real update on that. I'm still waiting on the short block from Toyota and I'm still waiting for the heads back from the machine shop. So with that, let's get started. Well guys, Upon further investigation of this Forerunner, I'm also going to need some other parts too. Uh, obviously, need new tires. Uh, they're kind of wiped out, and I need new tie rod ends because they're they're moving a little bit more than I would like, and they're not OEM. I ordered OEM ones, but let's get some work done while we can today. come with me here. I don't know if you can see this movement on camera very well. Kind of see it from here. Basically this is moving independent and overall these tie rods are just not very good quality. Um, I'm not even sure where I got these from so I'm gonna replace these with OEM Toyota inner tie rods but for the time being we can replace basically this upper arm, these uh, bushings right here. And then also this whole Pittman arm. And I know it looks new, it's because it kind of is, but I don't really trust this because it's like an AutoZone special. Plus I already have the OEM Toyota one and I'd rather be using OEM stuff. So that's what I'm gonna do. So the first thing we gotta do is I'm gonna release this upper ball joint down here. Um, now you can do it either way. You can undo these four bolts, uh, which might be what I end up doing. Originally I was thinking about using my new ball joint tool to remove the ball joint, but this is just gonna be a hundred times easier just to do these four bolts. Um, so I'm gonna start there, four tens. And we gotta take off this shackle for the torsion bars, uh, which shouldn't be under a ton of tension right now, but we might have to lower the, the torsion bar. So once we get this ball joint off, we'll know, if this doesn't move, then we're gonna have to take the tension off of the torsion bar bolt and kind of raise this a little bit to take some of the tension off to basically remove this entire upper arm. 
which is what we're trying to do. So, with that being said, I'll be right back. So we need to get the correct, I think, Torx fitting that goes in here. No, it's not Torx. It's just your normal hex fitting. Here we are. We've got the correct bolt, or sorry, hex nut. So this one I put in reverse because there's not a lot of room between the shock body to fit like this hex, uh, like an Allen head in there. So that's why I flipped them. She's a little dirty. As you can see, this uh, upper control arm didn't move at all, which means this torsion bar is pretty much maxed out because the, the tension is now off of this um, upper ball joint. So that means I need to get up underneath here and loosen the torsion bar to raise this up to get all the tension off of this so we don't release these bolts and bad things happen. I believe this washer is now just a part of this vehicle now <laughs> forever. Okay, so right here is the 22 mil torsion bar bolt that I'm just gonna zip off with a, an impact. Disclaimer, if your bolts are old, don't do this. So now you can see all of the tension is off of this upper arm. We can beat it around a little bit and my little ball joint spacer fell off. I know, you guys are going to judge me for using ball joint spacers, but let me tell you, there's not a lot of options out there for uh, these torsion bar suspension setups, which is why eventually this will probably get a solid front axle swap in the future, but not for the time being. All right, so now we can release these mounts right here. And then what we can do is we just remove these three bolts, one, two, three, which I believe are actually 19s. Yep. And then we can take this whole upper arm out. So pretty easy. I'll be right back with this 17. So I realized you probably don't have to remove this. You can probably just remove these three bolts and slide it all to the front to get it out. So I kind of want to try that because I know getting those bolts back in can be a pain to say the least. So let's just get these bolts off and see what happens. Let's experiment. Just chilling. Try to just get this torsion bar out and leave everything else in place. Because I know how much of a pain it is to, uh, there we go. We're coming out. Just take some, some work. So I replaced the torsion bars on this and it was kind of a pain in the butt because everything was still pretty much tight except for the back torsion bar bolt. Not recommended. So I'm trying not to pull the back bolt out because these are these torsion bars are splined a specific way. There we go. And they have to go back in a specific way. Let's pull back this little boot, which was a pain in the butt to get on, by the way. Okay, there we go. There we 
go. A little bit of uh, Jenga trying to get it out, but we got it. Now we gotta take this to the press. So what I've got set up right now is I'm just using the, the press to kind of hold this in place while I break off these uh, torsion bar mounting bolts back here. one and we already loosened the one in the front so that should be simple now we need to remove this gigantic nut right there but I'm going to get some brake cleaner clean it up because I know these threads like the strip so I've read multiple people having issues with these bolts stripping out so I'm hoping that we can avoid that. I'm gonna try to do something that I don't normally do. So I'll bring you in here in a second to show you, but let me get set up first. All right, let's see if I can do this. This is what I'm gonna try. Okay, so these bolts uh, are notorious for stripping out and you can see there's like a little flat portion right here that basically allows you to lock the nut in place. So what I'm gonna to try to do is I'm gonna to try to bend this up because a lot of people, when they just zip these off with like an impact or something like that, this is actually ruining the threads because this thread material is really soft. So what I'm gonna to try to do is get rid of that indent first and then try to zip it off, but we shall see how that works out. All right, that may not work. So, basically I'm just gonna go really slow and try to get that off. We're gonna go ahead and try to remove this with a half inch. She's under some torque. So, we're gonna need to uh, clamp it down a little bit better. This is enough to hopefully not flip off. Press. <clears throat> Let me think about this. I know what we can do. We've got to clamp this center section here. But, okay, so it looks like it is just wide enough to be able to clamp that. Well, let's move this over here. A lot of uh, moving stuff around to get this to cooperate. Really don't know if this is gonna work correctly. Hopefully that'll be enough. Oh, it's moving. I'm just wiggling it back and forth. I really don't want to strip this center piece out because I don't have a new one. I think we. Got in good there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to my chisel technique. I think we should be good. So now let's get her off of here. It's coming off pretty easy. So basically what I did is I just started this bolt until the flat part, the, the crush part of the nut um, started to lift a little bit. Then I tightened it again and I stuck a punch underneath there and pushed it all the way up so it didn't strip out this, this nut, thankfully, or this threaded portion here on the bushing. Okay, and so it didn't chew up the threads on either the bolt 
or the threaded portion so we can thread this back on now. That was my main goal. Now we have to flip it and we gotta do the same to the other side, which I think the other side is a little bit easier, but I'm basically gonna follow the same practice. So let me flip this thing over and I'll be back. All right, so we're back doing the same thing to the other side. I'm just gonna start it. The only reason I'm doing this is because I don't want to mess up the threads of this threaded rod. So now, this should come out nice and easy, not mess up any threads. There we go. So break it loose, and now we're good. So, for those of you doing Toyota pickup upper control arm bushings or Forerunner upper control arm bushings, this is what you gotta do. Just start it to push that lip up from the nut, and then tighten it again, and then get a punch in there and just raise it up again. So that will avoid stripping the actual threaded rod that holds these bushings in. It's very tempting to just use an impact and do it, but I've heard of other people completely destroying the threads um, of this bushing. So, you know, do it at your own risk, I guess, if you want. I mean, I ain't the boss of you, but I'm gonna play it safe. You can see the threads are in pretty good shape, actually in perfect shape on both the nut and the threaded rod. So now all we gotta do is press that center piece out. Get these bushings out, press the new ones in, and let me get set up for that stuff so you guys don't have to watch me struggle with it. All right guys, so I got it set up in a really weird way, but essentially I'm just using my hand to press the center bar out of the bushing itself. And it's kind of that simple. <laughs> and it comes out. So you gotta push it from one direction to the other. And now we gotta get both of these bushing races out. So let me get set up for that next, cause that's gonna be a pain. Essentially I've got the factory jack and I'm gonna try to press it out from the inside. Now this works for the lower control arm, so I'm hoping this will also work for the upper control arms. These bushings are uh, pretty in here. Guys, to be fair, <laughs> I'm hoping that these arms don't just start spreading apart on me. Hope they're stronger than that. But if not, I'm in for a new set of arms, I guess. Looks like the one on the bottom side moved. did get this to move just a little bit. So I think the problem we're gonna run into is getting something that's just the width of this, I don't know if you can see it, just the width of this on the inside to push it the rest of the way out. So that is what I'm fighting with right now. But I suppose we can try to grab it from the opposite side. Actually, I think I have an idea. I think I know what I need to do. Be right back. So thinking, don't mind my foot attire. Yeah, there we go. This will probably work. All right, there's one. That was the easy side. Now, boys, how do we get off this side? We just beat it, beat it with a hammer and see what happens. I'm hoping one of you out there is looking at me and is thinking, dude, you're doing this the hard way. Good. Let me know what that way is, <laughs> what the easy way is. <laughs> but it is moving. We're inching it out one by one. If I had an air hammer, this would be out already. This is what life is like when you don't have a full shop at your disposal. So we are making small amounts of progress. Emphasis on small. All right guys, I'm out of daylight. This took me a little while to figure out. 
but let me explain it to y'all. So first thing I did is I used the fork, the original fork, as uh, basically the base plate to press off of. And then what I did is I put this arm up here like so. So back in its original position so it sits flat. And then after I did that, I ended up putting the old bushing from the other side face down like this. So the bushing's not here, but imagine it's there. And then I just put a flat surface uh, on top of that. And I pressed all the way through the upper arm. So I had a, an extra like jack handle that I put through this center hole and press down on it from that side. And I was able to eject it. And I'm gonna call that a victory. And I'm gonna call it a night because we still got another side to do. Um, I'm gonna set up the other side so you guys can see how I did it uh, that way. Cause I think it'll be a little bit easier to visualize when I, now that I have it worked out for you guys, but that's gonna be it for tonight. I'm gonna continue to do the other side tomorrow um, or next weekend, but I told you we were gonna figure it out and I did. And that was a pain in the ass without the right tools. So <laughs> be Mac. prepared. It's been about a week. So I ended up not having this part. So I had, basically I ordered the wrong two bushings. So I ordered the wrong rear bushings, the bigger ones. Uh, so I had to wait for the new ones, but now I've got them. Now I'm going to press these bushings back into the arm. So I've only done one arm. I'm not going to show you guys the second arm because the process is the same. I will show you how I pressed out that big bushing though, because I didn't really capture it very well. But uh, yeah, so let's get started on that. I'm going to do this in reverse order that I took it out of. So I'm going to press the large bearing in first like that, or sorry, bushing, not bearing. Then I'm going to put this little rod back like so. And so once that bushing is pressed in, and then I'm going to press the small bearing in or bushing in on this side. So that's my plan going forward. I'm gonna show you, once I get this set up in the press, I will show you guys how I'm gonna press in the large one. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to raise, I'm gonna raise this up to here and I'm gonna kinda put the arm through the press like this basically. That way I'm pressing directly down on the um, bushing itself. And so I don't have as much travel room. So I'm gonna use the old bushing to kinda, of, I'm just gonna flip the old bushing upside down so the big part is here. That way I can press down on the outer race basically and push it in. So I'm gonna get that set up in this press uh, and I'll be right back. All right guys, so I've got it set up. Uh, let me show you what I got going on here. So what I ended up doing is I've got some quarter inch plate here. This is the Toyota axle nut socket. And this is the, the bushing. And this is about as good as I could get it right here. But it's gonna squish the rubber part of the bushing a little bit, but I'm just gonna end up pressing this down into position, hopefully. Um, so yeah, I'll let you know how that works. Oh, it seems to be working. I'm trying to get you guys a decent angle so you can see it. Um, it's definitely not perfect by any means, but it's getting in there. Let me see. I'll, I might just grab this by hand so I can show y'all. I think we might be there already. I might have pressed it in already. Or, no, nah, this one goes all the way. That's right. It's the other one that sticks like halfway out. Let me make sure, I'm gonna back this off. I'm gonna make sure that I'm lined up on the other side because it has to press through basically a gap and then there's two sections that it has to press through. So let me do that and then we'll see if this is actually working like I think it is. The only thing I'm kind of worried about right now is it not pressing in on the other side. Like it's not pressing evenly, which is possible. I think we should be good. Uh, we're gonna find out. Either it's gonna press or we're gonna break something, right guys? <laughs> Let me get this a little bit more centered than it was. I think I'm gonna remove that plate. I don't really need it. 
I was just trying not to break my socket. But let's see. Let's see if this is centered enough. It always looks off. Kind of is. Let's see. Yeah, it's a little bit off. The probably the most difficult part about this is the press setup. Like I'm not the greatest with presses, as I'm sure you've seen in my previous videos. Um, but I'm trying to get it somewhat even across this whole bushing. It's a lot of things that can break when you put massive amounts of pressure on them. I'm trying to avoid doing that. It's gonna go slow, methodical. I think we're good now though. We're in and we're bottomed out 360. All right, so not too terrible. Uh, I think the other side might be a little bit of a pain, but we're gonna find out. You have a better method to fit around this, uh, I'd recommend you do it simply because, you know, I'm pushing on this lip of this little bushing right here. So you can see there's like a rubber lip. So the socket I was using was pressing down on it, uh, but it went in, we're sitting flush. Uh, and now we have to get this other side in. But before we do that, we've got to get this, uh, this middle bar, this little bracket in here. And then we're gonna have to flip it and probably press it long ways. I think there's probably a little bit more of a gap on the side because this bar isn't like perfectly centered. So I'm gonna bring this back over here real quick and just press it in on the side that's not 100% flush. And just make sure it gets 100% flush. Now I believe we're flush 360. Bar still isn't totally centered, but I don't think it was to begin with, to be honest with you. I don't really remember. Or maybe we bent the hell out of this, this arm. Who knows? Who knows what happens? But let me get the other part set up. And I'll be back again. This takes a while. It's a process. All right, guys. So I think my upper control arm, I might have bent it a little bit when I was trying that trick with a jack. So this might be pretty eventful uh, because basically what's happening is the press is straightening out the arm. So this still moves pretty freely in here, but we're just now getting even to the point where we're pressing the bushing in. And this is kind of sketchy. It kind of feels like I'm gonna break this thing. The arm that is. Although, Press isn't super, it's not under a lot of tension, but there we go. I think the bushing, I think it's pressing in now. It's really hard to tell, to be honest. Kind of looks like the upper control arm is bending, but very sketchy. Is there probably a better way to do this? Yeah, probably. So we're gonna. I'm gonna back her off just a, a tad. So you can see the arm is bending quite a bit. And it's kind of going in at an angle. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reposition this. Essentially I'm trying to straighten my arm back out a little bit. And you can kind of see that well, maybe you can't, but I can kind of see that I'm pressing this arm at a pretty egregious angle right now, or this bushing rather. So I'm just going to try to straighten it back out by pressing on the side that it's kind of torqued a little bit. And we'll see that kind of pushes it in the right place and finds its way home. So. 
All right, I'm gonna try some moderately sketchy stuff here. This wouldn't be complete without me trying to do sketchy things, right? So because that arm was bent, uh, I had to press it a little bit on an angle. So essentially, what I'm trying to do is get that bushing straight all the way across. And I think there's enough pressure on it to where I can just do this. It does look like it's straightening out from the bottom position anyway. Give it a little bit more. See how sketchy we can get this. Like we're still kind of going at an angle here. Don't try this at home, kids. A little bit more sketchy pressing maybe. Might have to back it off and recenter this now. Yeah, let's uh, see what kind of progress we made, if any. So I don't want to press out that other arm because that would suck. All right, so let's recenter this. and hope that we're gonna get this 100% straightened out. Good news is I don't think the other bushing is pressing out, so that's always cool to see. Let me get this as centered as possible. bushing because our arm is bent because I tried a very sketchy thing to do. Oh, unless, were we bottomed out? No. Well, we might have been. We might have been bottomed out, guys. Perhaps. I'm going to try to straighten this out with a hammer and see if that gets us anywhere. It's not perfectly straight, but it's straight enough for right now. Does this fit over? Totally does. Let's do this instead. Let's use a 30 mil socket. Although, let's see. Let's see how much pressure this takes. Because what might end up happening is uh, this might just press the rubber portion, not the whole outside bushing, which is obviously what we want. So press the outside bushing, like the, the metal piece of the bushing, basically. Let's get this as lined up as we can. I think this, yeah, this is only gonna push on the rubber part, which is no bueno. So what we're gonna have to do is probably combine both this upside down, not that. Man, so many different combinations. So I think this is just gonna sink in, so that's not gonna work. Uh, let me come back to the drawing board on this one and think about it. All right, guys, so we got her. Uh, and essentially what I did is I just used the, the old uh, race from the old bushing. And then this is our Toyota Axle Nut Socket saving the day yet again. And essentially what I did is I went all the way around underneath and tapped it up with a hammer to kind of try to straighten this arm. But you can see we're finally flush again. So this one doesn't press all the way in. It stays out pretty far. And I'm just gonna give this a couple more presses just to make sure that it's seated correctly. And then I think we're done. And we can move on to the other side, which I'm not gonna show you guys, but Hopefully this does the trick. What's up guys? So right now I'm working on the other side and I can't get this giant uh, bushing out because it seems to be a little bit more stuck than the last. But I'm gonna use this opportunity to try out some products sent to me uh, metal protector, lubricates, frees rusty parts, protects against corrosion, displaces more moisture. So I became an AMS oil dealer and I've used their oil for quite a while. And 
I'm a big fan of their oil. I don't know about any of their fuel additives or gear oil. Well, gear oil, I assume, is pretty good. But their engine oil is, I've used it for a long time um, on my BMWs when I had those. Um, so I want to try this MP. It's not necessarily like for the purpose I'm about to use it for, but it does say that it lubricates moving parts penetrates to free rusty parts. So I'm curious to know whether that's actually going to work. And if it does actually work and it does help me get this thing out, uh, you can check out the link in my description for my AMSOIL products. So that has my dealer ID linked to it. So as long as you click on that link and whatever you purchase can then be counted towards my customer, right? So if you become a preferred customer or PC, I think it's called, you get 25% off of your order um, as well as free shipping. So consider signing up for preferred customer and checking out at least their oil. I can vouch for their oil. This, I don't know. I guess we're gonna find out in a little bit, huh? So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna remove this Free this straw, hopefully. So I know this is a this is metal protector, is what it's called. Uh, I'm not trying to protect this metal. <laughs> I'm trying to free this stuck bushing race we've got in here. Um, the last one came out extremely easy. I just used the the smaller bushing to kind of press it out, but that is not going to work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray the outside right here, the part that I actually have freed up all the way around. I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I've never had very good luck with penetrating oils or anything like that. To be honest, I mean, could they have made a difference? Possibly, I'm not gonna rule it out, but I don't know, I don't know if I believe the hype to be honest. But what I will tell you is that if I can see it seeping from one side to the other, then I know it's probably doing something, right? So I'm doing as many sides as I can, hoping that it's gonna actually penetrate through all of this corrosion and rust. I don't know if it will, but I'm gonna let this sit for a little while and then I'll update you guys if I get this thing out. I think it's safe to say it worked. So I didn't even use the press to take this out. I just, uh, I pressed it enough to where this lip was sticking up uh, so I could actually fit my chisel up underneath here. And I was hammering on this thing for probably a solid hour and a half without using this this metal protector from Amsoil, I wasn't getting anywhere, was not moving. I put that on, I let it soak for a good like, dude, maybe like 20 minutes, 20, 30 minutes. And I kept using the same technique with the chisel and it actually got out of here. And it looks like, now I can't tell if it actually penetrated or not because I kind of sprayed it all over the place. Uh, but I, there's not really any dry spots on this so at some level and some level it did penetrate which i was not getting this thing out before <laughs> so i know it's not meant to do this i literally i just had it on hand so thanks amsoil um if you guys want to use it go ahead and check out the link in my bio or in my description rather and uh check it out so again this is called amsoil mp metal protector and it works pretty good for getting these these bushings out to be honest so thanks amsoil guys i messed up so i was pressing the new the the bigger bushing that i showed you guys that i extracted using the uh, amsoil's products um i was pressing it back in and i messed up so i wasn't really paying attention to the other side um, 
of the control arm. So when it was going through, it was actually catching the lip on another side. So this is now trash, uh, which these bushings are not cheap. They are like $65 each. So oops on that one. Uh, but I do have another one, brand new. Uh, quite a while later, it's actually raining outside. So I have my garage closed and I upgraded the lighting in my garage. So you guys can kind of see a little bit better, but we need to press this in and I'm going to try to show you that the best I can um, and still paying attention to everything. Filming everything and working on stuff is like a whole new level of like working on vehicles. But anyway, I'm gonna make it happen for you guys and I'm gonna, I wanna show you how I managed to get this giant bushing in here. Okay, so I'm using the original, I guess, yoke that sits on this, this arm. And that's kind of how I'm placing the, uh, the control arm in here to press. So I'm just putting this down like that. And this is one of my press plates. And essentially what I'm doing is I'm putting this down like this. So actually, I'm actually doing this a little bit. There we go. So I know it's off to a slight angle, but uh, I'm kind of left with no choice, to be honest. So please excuse me whilst I struggle to get this in place. Okay, so if you're gonna do this, I'd recommend getting like one of those actual like bushing press tools. So this 20 ton press, I mean, it's great for what needs to happen, but it uh, leaves a little bit to be desired for this predicament. So I'm trying to find any way I can get this up here. I think this is probably gonna be the ticket, perhaps, maybe. Maybe not, okay, just kidding. All right. Let me figure this out. Let me get this on this press and then I'll be back. All right guys, so this is what I landed on. Um, essentially, I'm just foregoing these and I'm uh, placing this yoke like perpendicular to these bars. I'm gonna press this in, but I'm gonna recheck this and just make sure so I don't break another bushing, $60 bushing. So let me just let me get this pressed in um, so I don't have to worry about filming and then I'll show you guys the finished result. All right guys, so didn't mess it up this time. We're pressed in and this was my setup. So essentially this is just some quarter inch plate that I had sitting around um, from another tool. This is actually a Toyota axle nut socket. And then here you can see the yoke, the original yoke from the arm that I just put on the uh, supports of the press itself. So be really careful getting this big one back in here, guys, because otherwise, if you don't, you're going to get your other one and you're gonna press it in thinking everything's going fine and it's gonna end up looking like this. So I had to get another one, as I said before, but we got the new one in, thank you. The Lord is in. All right guys, after a little bit of a battle, I got my centerpiece in and this end bushing in so this one doesn't press all the way in. Um, essentially what I had to do is I had to put pressure on this bushing with the press and then uh, hammer up on this side and basically get this to even out because otherwise it was just kind of like collapsing the the entire a arm so i didn't want to break the a arm um, that's why i say if you have a, a bushing press tool i'd probably use it for this i don't have one i but i do have a press so that's essentially the predicament that i was in but i recommend you get one if you're going to do this job or just replace the arm <laughs> i mean honestly so it, it's really up to your tolerance of what you want to do um it's not a hard job it's just you got to be very careful and it's kind of annoying i hate doing bushing work um, I don't know if any of you can agree with me, but bushing work is probably the worst work you can possibly do. But at the risk of being 
uh, overexposed. All right, so now that those are pressed in, excuse the weird lighting, I've got it set up on the shop press. But now that those are pressed in, we can go get these or the last upper control arm on my Forerunner and get this thing off of Jack's hands finally after a couple weeks of waiting on parts. Um, so let's go put that on and probably not right now because it's raining, but once it stops raining, we're going to go put this on. All right, guys. So I did a little cleanup of the M4. So I pretty much finished um, putting the upper control arms back on. So we'll take a look over here. And I'm going to show you guys some finished up work. I know we did one side, but here's the other side. So we got this for the most part buttoned up. Um, I don't, I don't remember if I mentioned this, but I did replace the tie rod ends and I also replaced the idler arm on the opposite side. This might have to be next. This is also aftermarket, but I'm not 100% sure. So essentially what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to put these tires back on. And then I'm going to give this like a real quick and dirty alignment, kind of, just a toe alignment. Uh, because this is, <laughs> I counted the threads on these to put them back. Totally way off, not even close. So, um... I'm just going to give it a visual alignment and then I'm actually going to run a string from the rear tire all the way up to the front tire and try to uh, even it out a little bit, give it some positive toe in and then we just have to set the, uh, the uh, ride height for the torsion rods. So I'm not going to show you me putting on this wheel because it's kind of unnecessary, but that's where I'm at. And I will show you the alignment part though. So that part is going to be next. Okay. So I'm not sure if this picks up in the video, but uh, the steering wheel is straight right now. And you can see that this is like ultra towed out. So basically what that means is the wheels are pointed out like this. So you can see right here and right here are pointed out towards the sides of the vehicle, the front of them. So basically I'm just gonna visually get those you know, as close as I can. And then uh, I'll show you basically what I do for just a quick alignment. Literally, this is just to get from my house to the alignment shop. This is not permanent <laughs> at all. Uh, I mean, these tires are smoked anyway, so I don't really care, but um, at least when I get it close, you know, cause otherwise it's gonna drive all crazy when I drive it to the alignment shop to get new tires and an alignment. So I'll show you that briefly, but essentially all I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, undo the little sleeve for the tie rods, which I'll show you a close up on, uh, and just bring them in together. So basically tighten them, bring the two ends closer together. Okay. So I will briefly show you that. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen this sleeve. Essentially it's a 12 and a 13 on opposing sides. All right. So that's enough for this to move. And essentially, I'm just gonna watch this wheel, uh, the front of this wheel come in towards the vehicle. Cause I know it ha that's the direction it needs to go. Again, this is not gonna be perfect guys. Uh, not to mention like the height of the suspension is gonna make a pretty big difference as well as, you know, it not being on the ground is gonna make a pretty huge difference. So that's pretty darn towed in right there. Um, so I'll probably back it off a little bit just visually. And then that's gonna be relatively close. And I'm gonna do the same to the other side and then um, I'm going to run a string and then I'll show you kind of how I judge the last of it. So I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, nothing crazy. And yeah. All right, guys. So I don't know how clear this is going to pick up from the camera, but I've got a string that is coming from the back tire right here. And this is barely grazing this back tire tread. Right, and I just have it tied off 
to the suspension components back there. And then up here, I want to make sure that this string intersects exactly where, ideally the center of the wheel, but you want it even to where the back wheel is. And now you can see there's kind of a gap between the string and the tire on both sides. Uh, and granted, this is a very rough measurement, like do not go by this, but now you need a tape measure right here. And I've already adjusted this one, but I can kind of show you what I did. And all I did was I stuck this tape measure right up against this string, not to move it though. Um, and then I stuck it uh, right at the rim itself. You can do the tire too. Um, the rim is just more consistent for my mind. Um, so here, roughly, you can see, it's, it's going to be kind of hard to tell, but we're a little bit past uh, 3 and 5 eighths uh, measurement on the front side. And then if we come back here, we are a little bit under 3 and 5 eighths. Again, it's not going to be perfect because this isn't the best solution, but you can definitely see it is less than three and five eighths. So that means we are towed in in the front a little bit, which is exactly what I want. Um, so let me just give a quick overview of tow, essentially. Um, and basically, you can see how this tire is like super worn in or worn out on this side, on the inside. That means previously I had excessive toe out, so this measurement was smaller than the back of the tire measurement. So this front of the tire was out further, and the back of the tire was in further towards the body. And essentially that causes like instability in steering, and it also causes the inside edge of your tire to wear out. So basically what I want to do is give it a little bit of uh, toe in, or uh, positive toe I believe it is, Either positive or negative, I, I can never remember the, the distance, but uh, I believe it's positive. So you want some positive toe, which will basically now wear this side, <laughs> uh, realistically. Um, but usually vehicles have like a, a slight amount of toe in, and uh, that's just for general stability and even tire wear. So this isn't perfect because the height is you know probably different from both sides, but this will get you close enough to um, something that's actually road drivable and will uh, essentially get you where you need to be and get you to the alignment shop to get a legitimate alignment um, in. So I just wanted to go over that really quick. If you have any questions for me, please put them in the comments and I'll answer them the best I can or I'll link you to a video uh, that explains it better than me. Um, so now I'm just going to do the other side so it's slightly towed in and then this job is pretty much finished up. All right, guys, that's going to do it for us today. So I hope that was a little bit helpful because I didn't see a lot of videos with up, replacing those upper control arm bushings. So I wanted to get something out there. No, it wasn't the most detailed video ever, but I hope you got the gist of what's going on. So if you didn't, please leave a comment below. I'll answer you. I'll even make a follow up video if I have to. Um, but with that being said, make sure when you do this, you take it to get an actual alignment and not just the the quick and dirty string method. But that being said, guys, make sure you like the video, check out my description for a bunch of links, and leave me some comments. Um, and if you like the video enough, just share the video. And next time, we're going to be unboxing this guy, which is our new engine, and starting to assemble stuff. So that being said, guys, peace out. Have a good one. See you next week.